Today's show is sponsored by The Scream Zone. LCC students save $6 off of the terrifying triple haunt admission at the goriest, scariest, and screamiest Fright Fest in San Diego. Hello Mavericks, it's Room 901 back with our first episode of Mav Nation. Our show now has 20 minutes built into the schedule every other Monday. Look out for our next episode October 3rd. Today's show is sponsored by our friends at Scream Zone, so go ahead and pull out your phones and hop onto Instagram. The first person to like and tag three friends on our Scream Zone post at Mav Life News will win four tickets to Scream Zone. Winners will be announced next show. We're excited to announce that Mav Nation now has three separate sections Mav Life News, Mav Life Sports, and Mav Life Style. Without further ado, let's get on with the show. I'm Kennedy Carr. And I'm Frankie Reyes. And you're watching Mav Nation. If you'd like to have us feature your class or club in one of our shows, email us at mavlifenews at gmail.com. Seniors, there's several events coming up to help you and your parents with the college application process. This Thursday, September 22nd, is Senior Parent Night. It'll be held in the theater at 6.30 p.m. Now here's Mavlife News reporters talking to students about the new bell schedule. So what do you think of the new bell schedule? I don't really like it. Um, I really like the new bell schedule because it allows me to take seven classes, which is nice. So this year I'm able to take acting as well as all the hard classes I want to take. So it lets you take another class that you want to do, so it's like free education. I like how I get to leave on Monday early sometimes, and then I get an extra period. I don't like it. I think it's really confusing with the whole ESP and days of the ESP. I like how like they added a seven period for freshmen so it doesn't like affect us. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really confusing. Like, two electives. It's confusing because it like floats around. I think that it's nice that we have shorter classes. I think the teachers need to improve on using ESP to like their advantage because they usually just through. teach straight through. Well, personally, I kind of like the new bell schedule because it okay. makes it more interesting every day because oh. the schedule is always changing and the time is always changing. It's confusing. It changes a lot, but I like it. I think it's pretty cool. Better than last year. I think it's pretty confusing with the week A and week B. I think that uh, kind of like the whole, you know, oh, is it an ESP day today or is it a seventh period day today? Just kind of making it a more predictable schedule. Financial Aid Night is October 5th in the theater at 6.30. More details coming soon. Need information on what's happening on campus? Well, we here at Map Nation are here to help along with the LCC app. To get the app, just go to the App Store and type in La Costa Canyon High School. Now here's MavLife news reporter talking to the new biology teacher, Emily Stewart. Emily Stewart is a new biology and earth science teacher at LCC this year. After enjoying informal environmental education with kids, she decided to pursue teaching. I wasn't enjoying everything else, the other jobs that I had, so I was like, oh, why don't I try teaching? Stewart grew up in Encinitas and graduated from LCC. Taking classes in high school accelerated her interest in the subject and helped lead her to major in environmental science with an emphasis in wildlife conservation at UC Berkeley. I actually went to LCC myself. Um, when I was a senior, I took um, an AP, the AP environmental science class and I loved it. And so that's kind of how I got into science. Before teaching, Stewart worked at the city of Oceanside as a water conservation coordinator. With the drought going on, um, there's a lot of everything, everybody's you know, conserving water, so I was kind of that person um, for people to go to about water conservation and how to save water. Stewart also worked at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park as a research assistant, doing hands-on work with the cheetah and okapi, collecting data for a study. Collected data for a study they were doing about, you know, if the animals are stressed in their enclosures and trying to improve their environments there. Stewart hopes to immerse herself in the culture of LCC and get to know the teachers and students. She wants to have fun being a teacher and someone that her students can depend on. Just, just trying to help them get hands-on experience in science has been really fun, seeing them light up when they do. September 22nd in room 340, there's a freshman baseball meeting. Any freshman interested in playing baseball, please attend. Also, don't forget that next Wednesday, September 28th, is the last day to drop any classes without penalties. Talk to your counselor for more information on this. Last Wednesday, the senior class held a picnic in the meadow. Every Wednesday, 246 day, look out for them, come bring your lunch and hang out. And that's this episode of Mav Nation. Follow us on Twitter at MavLife, 
on Instagram at MavLifeNews and our website at MavLifeNews.com. I'm Frankie Reyes. And I'm Kennedy Carr. Thanks for watching. Now here's Mad Life Sports. From Rippy Field here on the campus of La Costa Canyon High School, I'm Calvin Zeljak. I'm joined by Evan West, and this is Mad Life Sports. Well, we've got a packed first show for you guys today, highlighted by a head varsity football coach, Sean Sovacool, an interview with him later. Also, we have the first Mav Life Sports whip around, where we're recapping a wild start to Maverick Athletics this year. All right, Evan, without further ado, let's get right into it with boys varsity water polo. They took on San Marcos on Tuesday, September 13th. They came up short, being defeated 12 to seven by the Knights. They are now two and three on the year. They have five different events coming up between now and our next show, including a game against Granite Hills on Thursday, September 15th. Follow at Mavlife Sports on Twitter for all the updates on boys' water polo. Absolutely, Calvin. But let's continue where we'll recap the rest of what's gone down since the rest of the year in Maverick Athletics. All right, let's talk about girls' varsity golf. They lost to Poway in their opening match on the year. Again, they have several different events coming up between now and our next show. And once again, at Mav Life Sports on Twitter, we'll be there for all your athletics needs. Girls Tennis starts a doubles tournament today and have six more events through October the 3rd. Also, they play a rivalry match against Torrey Pines on September the 29th. And as for boys cross country, on September 10th, they ran at Kit Carson Park, and it was girls varsity coming away with first place, led by junior McKenna Brown, and the boys varsity team coming in second place, despite the absence of top runner Jared Lyles. For Maverick Field Hockey, the ladies Mavs have completed in four varsity events through last Thursday, and the JV squad competed in a tournament on Saturday, September the 10th. Varsity is off to a hot start, with an 8 to nothing shutout over Del Norte, and an overtime win against San Pasquale. Next up for the Lady Mavs are four more varsity events, including the Varsity Sarah Tournament. And as for varsity volleyball, the girls competed in the Durango in Fall Classic at Durango High School this past weekend and they will be competing against SDA on September 27th for their home opener and then they will have another big match against Canyon Crest Academy two days later on the 29th. Let's talk football. Mavericks entered their Friday night contest against the Poway Titans 2-1 with a win against Lucerna and against Escondido. All right, Evan, and that is a perfect segue into our interview with head varsity coach Sean Sovacol. Trevor Ferguson sat down with him earlier. Trevor, take it away. Well, being able to have a support staff that allows me to do more by doing less uh, has been a big change. So the staffing is a change. And then I think uh, maybe some of the emphasis on the offense, spreading the ball more, uh, more of that spread power team. I think we've already completed more passes than you know through six or seven games last year, uh, and, and having that intent has been um, you know paying off when, when we got all of our parts. Uh, you know our balance on offense has been fantastic. I think as of right now we're like 60-40 past the run, which is a flip from years past. Uh, but you know when it's on, it's it's been successful. So I think Evan Atkin, you know, I think he's he's, he's always been a leader by example. You know, he's a four-year program player. Um, he's always been one of the better players. I think his, his off-season effort uh, is paying dividends. He's stronger, he's more physical, he's in good shape. Uh, he'll start to play more defense as the season goes, uh, especially with some of the losses we've already had up front. It's been heartbreaking. Um, so some of these guys that are going to have some increased roles. So Evan, Evan's definitely stepped up. Tanner's gotten better and better. Um, there's still room for growth for all of them and me and us. I think get good leadership from the coaches too, uh, year in and year out. Um, but, you know, it's exciting to see the kids take the reins more often. We could go with the easy answer is Carson Lippert. Uh, he was going to be a varsity player in spring ball and he broke his foot in CIF prelims walking on a curb. Uh, so he was the guy that was going to be up. Um, I think Brett Puchel, you know, really cemented himself on the radar just with his consistencies. He's just, he's, he's a workhorse and uh, he looks fantastic. He's had some bright moments early. Um, you know, and then Jake Newfield, who was able to kind of take the reins at times and, and had a great summer um, and, and uh, you know, had some opportunities and some passing turns and stuff where Tanner was out of town, um, you know, college recruiting opportunities. And so Newey got, got a, uh, an early jump to kind of run the show and handled it really well. I think uh, not a surprise, but Jake Cashman is rock solid consistent. He was last year as well. 
he's our leading receptions leader, our leading, our leading yards leader is Tanner. And so I think going into the season, we didn't know what this was going to look like. We kept it competitive and it paid dividends because both players are better for it. You know, we kept them really honest with it. So those games are important. There's no doubt about it. I mean, there's no ignoring the difference between those games and, and you know, regular season opponents. They're rivals. It's real. Yeah. It's, the, it's a tangible feeling. But when we get in trouble is when we focus on that. We need to focus on us. And when we play uh, and handle our business, then beating teams is a byproduct. And so I think the, the key this year is to de-emphasize that and emphasize us and handle our business. And when we do, we're really good. I think they were selected for the work they do in the preseason. All four of those guys trained very, very hard. Um, they never miss after school workouts, they never miss morning workouts, they went to all the summer camp, fall camp. They're, they're rock solid as far as that goes. And then they're good teammates, they're good to each other. Uh, not a bad attitude, not a sour apple in that group. Uh, they really love the school and love the opportunity and the responsibilities. And, and hopefully they continue to grow as leaders and, and can you know, take us to our full potential. Uh, Carlsbad needs to be the second home game. Like, we got to trap. Yeah. And I say that, I've been saying it until I'm blue in the face. It was really cool to see some faces at Mount Carmel and Escondido, yeah. more than I've ever seen. Um, but don't be content. You know, you, you got to bring your friends, make friends. If you don't have them, bring them. Uh, you bring your family. And make it. It's. I think if anything, we're exciting. It's not. It's. It's not like it's a bad uh, show. You know, it, you're gonna get your money's worth when you come watch the Maverick football team. So a lot of excitement in the program. Uh, you know, we're gonna. We're going to continue to crank it up and, and we love the support. The kids play better, you know, when, when the whole community is behind us, so continue to do that. That would be awesome. Thank you, Trevor. Obviously, we're all looking forward to an exciting 2016 year of the Maverick football season. So that'll just about do it for our first episode. As always, be sure to follow at Mavlife Sports on Twitter and Instagram. Then add Mavlife Sports on Snapchat for the latest news, sports, and updates in Maverick Athletics. We'll see you next month or on Monday, October 3rd. I'm Calvin Zeljak. And I'm Evan West. And now let's send it over to Gillian Schaefer for Mav Lifestyle. Hello, Mavericks. My name is Gillian Schaefer, but you can call me Gil. And today is different. Journalism is launching Mav Lifestyle, a new broadcast show. We are bringing in some of your favorite Mavericks to try a new food fad veganism. Sit back, relax, and welcome to Mav Lifestyle, the show made for the Mavs by the Mavs on what makes LCC LCC. Claire Maynard, I'm a senior here. Hi, I'm Grady Beck, I'm a freshman. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm a senior. <laughs> uh, I'm Lyonna Pukahi, and I'm a freshman. I'm Katrina Kerwin, and I'm also a freshman. My name's Cooper Ball, I'm a senior here. I'm Blake Ball, and I'm a sophomore here. So Trish gets pretty good. That's nasty, ew. Mm. Mm. Delectable. Like cheese pizza. No. Cool. Bring me my water. A little salty. That's so gross. It's really gross. I don't think anyone should eat that. <laughs> it's okay. Hang in there. Oh, I can like taste it. It's, it's not so cheesy. It's really good. The texture's nice. Oh, no. No. See, she was just tasting the Triscuit. Yeah. It tastes like gross cheese. Like gross like old, old cheese. cheese. <laughs> don't be vegan. I'm trying to compare it to something. Rubber, maybe? Like, not disgusting rubber. Not a lifestyle, it's just a choice. It's so gross. It's like, it's really gross. Oh. I'm Jack Ritchie, and I'm in 12th grade. Mark Roberts, 12th grade. I'm Cole Peterson, in 9th grade. Angelina Garcia, in 9th grade. Hi, my name is Jacob, I'm a senior. Hi, my name is Soren, and I am also a senior. Ziggy Bacaris. Twelve. Not necessarily. Why hungry. is it cut into like little chop? Like I'm not. This chicken. Gross. Thank you. Thank you. Hold me, man. Hold me. Mm. Oh my! No. A little bit of soy sauce on there. Yeah, it's not the best thing I've ever tried, but texture's a little weird. What is it? Doesn't really have much of a taste. 
don't know, it tastes um, kind of like a, like a cold sausage without the meat part. Would I replace it with what? My non, like, meats? No! It's kind of like rubbery almost, but you can like bite through the rubber. I've drank in soy milk once. <gasps> oh! Oh my gosh. Smooth, but not the good kind of smooth. Time no, 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 the viscosity, crazy. it's not like milk's viscosity. Viscosity? But it, but it's yeah, but it hangs around in your mouth. It, it, it almost tastes like you got some milk, you threw some vegetables in the milk, and you blended it all together. And then that's what you have here. It's like milk the syrupy like, stuff. It, milk and like, 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 I don't know, like Gatorade. Yeah. It's not as like rich as uh, regular milk. There you go. It's kind yeah, of addicting I think it's kind of good I can't though. stop drinking. Like has a decent effort. Yeah. Have you ever just eaten a pack Co of coffee creamer? Coffee creamer, but it vegan. It smells better than it tastes. Vegan? This is vegan? This is soy milk, dude. I, think coffee that is soy. I don't think I've ever just drank coffee creamer, so. Really? It's actually kind of good. It's moist. It's dank. Lifestyle, the show made for the Mavs by the Mavs on what makes it easier. <laughs> uh, happy we could help with the, the tasting of the vegan foods. Journalism is that let <laughs> say the S word really, we're on camera. She can cut. It's something tastes really poopy. Uh, <laughs> poopy. <laughs> you can't I don't even remember what I was saying anymore.